This is the Vivo 65 ventilator. It's manufactured by Abreus. This video will show you how to use the ventilator. So it's currently in the off position. You do see a light on right here. That's just indicating that we are connected to power. The circuit of choice. This is a valveless circuit, no leak in the circuit, but we add an external leak port, exhalation port here. That's what's recommended for your adult patients. They do have the option to use an active circuit that's more recommended for your pediatric patients. To wake up the ventilator, to power it on, you first have to wake up the screen. There's a power button on the side right here that when pressed will wake up the screen. It's currently in standby mode. To actually power on the ventilator, you would press and hold the power button. We'll get to that into, uh, in a minute. First, you see the pre-use test. It's asking you to perform a pre-use test. Anytime it's the first time setting up a patient um, or if you're changing out a circuit, you're gonna wanna do a pre-use test. And it guides you through how to do the test. So right now it's telling you to connect the patient circuit. Do not connect patient. Make sure nothing is blocking the end. Exactly how I have it right now. So I'll hit okay. It's identifying that this is a leakage patient circuit. That is correct. It's saying to connect all patient circuit accessories used between the Vivo and the leakage port. No patient circuit accessories used between the leakage port and the patient shall be connected. So the leakage port shall also not be connected. So nothing is connected right now for this test. It's just checking the resistance and then compliance of the tubing. So first checking the resistance. Then it will have me block the end. And now it is checking the compliance and verifying that there is no leak through the circuit. So that's required to check the compliance and resistance. So pre-use test is successful. You can now start using therapy. So I'll go ahead and connect my patient circuit here. So you press OK once the pre-use test is completed, and this takes you back to your home screen. So you have the option to choose mode. When you press that, that will give you the option to do ventilation mode, pressure, volume, or CPAP. And then you have breath modes of support, only available in the pressure mode, um, assist control, mouthpiece ventilation, and SIMV. So as each screen is highlighted, that's how you can go and choose your different modes. Then you go down to your breath mode and you can change to a specific breath mode. You can also scroll down and choose a different patient, adult or pediatric. This ventilator is manufactured in Europe, so that's how they spell pediatric. And then you can also lock the patient back out by going to home and entering the patient menu. So we wanna stay in the clinician menu for right now. So I will hit no to stay in that clinical menu. So I have my volume, I have my assist control. If I wanna set my certain parameters, I can click on setup. Here I can adjust my tidal volume, peep, breath rate, eye time, rise time, inspiratory trigger, and my flow pattern. If you press set up again, you will have more settings to choose. Psi breath, psi rate, psi percentage, psi calculated. Press set up again and it takes you back to your original screen. You press alarm to adjust your alarms. So you have your different alarm uh, parameters you can choose. You press alarm again, that takes you to more options. You press alarm the third time and that takes you to an actual event history. So you can see prior alarms that the vent had. You can also see my pre-use test that I just completed earlier.
monitor will take you back to the home screen and that gives you the patient monitors when therapy is being used. Others will give you some generic information about the, the patient circuit, the profiles. You could perform another pre-use test if you were using an FiO2 or CO2. Um, it does have the capabilities of having those, those analyzers connected here. Not done in the home use, but could be useful in the hospital. Um, you can change your date and time and all that stuff in these options right here. So I will go back to the monitor screen and I will power on the therapy. So to power on therapy, you're going to press and hold the power button. A little bar is going to fill up. Keep pressing and holding until that bar completely fills. Alarm silence right here. So that will silence any alarms. You start to get your measured parameters that the patient is achieving. Anytime you do have an alarm, I'll go ahead and disconnect this from the patient. It's alarming disconnection. But you notice you'll have this information screen. If you press on information, it can give you helpful tips, uh, tips on what the alert is meaning. So it's like a little troubleshooting advice for the therapist if they're not quite familiar with what the alert is prompting them uh, of what's going wrong and how to fix it. So I will connect my patient back. Fixing my disconnect. And my alarm is now resolved. Press information again to get rid of the tip screen there. Pressing and holding the handshake again, that's the left arrow and right arrow simultaneously and allowing that bar graph to fill, will then lock your ventilator out when you go back to the home screen. So you don't have to worry about a patient or caregiver coming in and accidentally changing prescription settings. They can view things, but they can't really do anything else. To power off the device, you press and hold the power button. That's gonna stop treatment. You have to release and then press the alarm silence to fully stop the therapy. That puts the ventilator back in standby mode. If you want to turn off the display completely and turn it off of standby mode, you just press the power button again and that powers off your ventilator. As far as maintenance on the ventilator, there is a spot for filters. This little window pops off here, exposing a foam filter that's going to get your larger dust particles. That can be carefully cleaned, rinsed with water. And then you have a smaller HEPA filter that will get your smaller particles. That cannot be cleaned, um, that can just need to be replaced every so often. This is another filter exposed here that can just randomly be checked out and cleaned. Just make sure it's, it's free of any obstructions. That's just protecting the actual computer. This is going to the blower right here. 